Now let's come back to a concept which is called as anonymous type. So if you notice what we did some time back, maybe again I'll try to comment the code and we'll surround this and put it in a region which is called as object initializer. So let's try to use now another concept which is called as anonymous type. So what have we done here? We created an employee class object. We tried to store it in implicit type and we initialize the object using object initializer concept. And these are all auto properties that we have. Now a question to you, what will happen if at all I comment this entire class? If you obviously comment the entire employee class, then this code is bound to fail because employee class does not exist into the code then you compile the code and here comes like namespace or class or type called as emp is not found are you missing a directive so point to note here if employee does not exist you're, you're going to get this error but then here comes can i ask something more to a compiler can i ask compile like i asked compiler to write down a property for me called as number name and address compiler did that I asked compiler to write down private member against that property in a reverse engineering way. Compiler did that as well for me. I did ask compiler to write down get a set of functions in a missile. Compiler did the same thing. Compiler, I asked like left hand side, I don't know what to put up. Right hand side, but it's new employee object. Compiler tried to put up where EMP as employee class object type. Now, can I ask something more to the employee that is maybe compiler please create an object of type some class which I really don't know. Look at the syntax here. I am asking compiler to create an object of a class which I am not defining at all. Which means I am asking compiler to go and write down a class for me. And then what is it that the compiler is going to go and do? Compiler is also going to go and define number name and address as properties automatically into it. So if I say emp dot, can you see the intelligence now? That is there is number then there is name and then there is so called you can say address that we have all of them are of specific type address is of type string right now why would address be of type string look at this on the right hand side you have it initialized to a string right so number becomes integer name becomes string and address also becomes string now so based on the right hand side of equal to what is the type that is evaluated at compile time and address name and number will get their types then are number name and address variables or properties these are properties right now and that's what you can notice by this icon of property this is the property icon that normally you see but then what is the type of this object that is just now created the if you carry a cursor again on where emp this can tell you that right now there is something called as anonymous type whose variable is emp right now can i really get to know the details here you can so you can very well print on the console emp dot get type and dot to string so what will happen now is employees full type is what will be notified to you on the console then so if i run this and if you observe we have got a type for employee object that is f underscore anonymous type number zero and then there is number name and address all values printed can i really see the class can I create a cl this class object by myself? As usual, you cannot create a class of this class object by yourself. Reason behind that, or you, you just cannot refer the class, I mean to say, into your code because you have not defined the class by yourself. It's being defined by so-called compiler. Can I see the MSL? Yes. Let me show you MSL for the same code again. And you can notice here, f underscore anonymous type number zero is what is defined. There are private numbers that we have here. And then if you notice, there is something missing in the code. And what's missing in the code is we have get functions only. We do not have set functions for the properties that are defined automatically. Now that's insane that if it is doing so much for us, then why can't just allow and why can't just have a set property? Keep it in mind, if set property does not exist, which means there is something wrong and terribly wrong. What does it mean? Which means if set property does not exist, I just cannot change somebody's name over here. 
maybe if I put double quote over here and something else and you compile you end up in error that is the property name cannot be assigned to it is read only but it was working so far it was working so far because you have been defining the property by yourself and now the property is not defined by you it is defined by the compiler even the class itself to which the property belongs is defined by a compiler and default compiler generates this property as read only now a question must be there why does it do it so and where are we going to go and use such kind of classes for which we do not have access to then before we proceed with that discussion just notice it on the right hand side of equal to if you see there is some class object which exists isn't it which class object is this that class name we really don't know which means what goes on the right hand side of equal to we do not know that and then you know when we don't know what's on the right hand side of equal to then what type we use to hold it obviously we use var type which is ultimately implicit type so I hope the usage of implicit type is more clear now because what's on the right hand side of equal to we do not know that. What will happen if at all somebody goes and puts up maybe object as a type over here. This line will definitely compile no doubt in that. But then how will you try to get emp dot number name address. You have to typecast it remember and if you have to typecast it like emp if you typecast it in which type will you typecast it. Do you know the type? No, since you do not know the type, so here object type is completely useless. It has to be implicit type called as var in such cases. Now, this is going to be a little interesting. Var implicit type holding object of a class which we did not define. All auto properties, but the properties are read only right now, which means first time assignment is allowed till the time they get the type. But then after that, what happens is we just cannot change the value. Why will somebody do that? So there is a very uh, important part to note. If you have heard of something called as ORM. So normally in the ORM frameworks, like let's say Hibernate in Java and Hibernate from Red Hat or Entity Framework. Normally what happens is many number of times we keep on creating classes which are exactly to the same structure as that of a table. And then whenever you query to a table like select star from employee. You normally try to hold the data of the employee table into employee class object normally in, in in programming and when you try to hold it in employee class object then you attempt to define properties you attempt to hold the content and then you attempt to present the content into the ui is your purpose only reporting is your purpose of defining employee class object is not doing a validation is your purpose of defining employee class just to hold the objects just, just to create object and hold the data, pass on the data from one layer to another layer and finally just display that data into the UI. Is it the case? If yes, then why do you define employee class? Let the compiler quickly define that class for you. Is it going to go on cause or is it going to go on cost me anything? Absolutely. It's going to go on cost you more compilation time. Reason behind that, this class definition is going to go on get generated at compile time. But then will it cause any kind of impact on top of runtime? Absolutely no. Runtime will be as simple as it was before whenever you used to define employee class also. But what if I want a complete control over name initialization, address initialization? What if I want to do manipulation? What if I want to do add extra function in this class? Sorry, you have not written the class itself. How will you go and add a function into it? So again, important point to note. Here, the class is defined automatically by compiler. You do not have access to write the code inside that class. You do not have, you don't even know the name in case of c -sharp. The name that we saw that was there in MSIL. So unfortunately, this class cannot be further extended, inherited or so-called, maybe let's say we just cannot go and add any extra maybe function into it. This class is done. We have got number, name and address. These are the properties initialized. Based on the right hand side, they will grab their types and then they can give you intelligence afterwards. So normally, instead of defining ORM layers by yourself or object mapping layers by yourself, you can quickly finish that with the help of this concept which is called as anonymous type. Then another question must be there. What will happen if at all I copy and I paste it? 
let me comment this code now yeah what will happen if i define this one as employee one will employee one and emp be of same type then let's observe obvious answer that you may have is no that is they will be of different type but that's not going to go on happen if i run the code again and if you notice this let's notice it we have got these two types same if you see guys how come compiler knows now one more time i'm going to run ildasm and you can notice there is only one type defined which is called as anonymous type number zero how come compiler knows that it has to not generate a new type in case of .NET. It has to rather refer the same type which is already defined some time back. Important point to note these properties here. The time by defined property number, name and address look at their sequence. Can I have different values? Absolutely, it's just an object. You can always have different values out here like ABC1, maybe let's say Pune1. So here, these properties exist in this, this sequence. So obviously, Compiler comes to know that it has it need not define another class. Otherwise, it would create a problem in many classes, right? And then normally from the ORM perspective, which is going to go on ORM classes, which are going to go on actually hold data for only lacks of rows, we will have lacks of classes then, correct? So then obviously what happens is compiler is that way very intelligent and it is going to not create another class for us. It's rather going to go and hold the data using object of a same class which is defined some time back. But then what's the situation when it might go for a new class itself? There are two situations. First situation that we have is, suppose if at all we do not have any property itself, like we, have, we don't have number, then definitely this class structure and the other class structure with three properties is different. It's bound to go for a new one. Even forget about this, even if you change the sequence out here, that is, you have got name first, number after, and then address after that. You compile it. See, values are, even if you put same values now out here, let's say ABC, you put over here as 100, and you put over here as Pune. You'll find out properties are same. Sequence is different. And now, if you notice, you will suddenly see there are two types defined by the compiler. Now, that's insane again. If you go to MSR, we have got two types out here. So here, what is more important is sequence matters. What will happen if at all, again, I'm going to comment this code for a while. Yeah. If at all you notice, forget about maybe changing the sequence over here. What will happen if at all I change the name's type? something called as 100 or so will it create another class for me observe that run this what do you notice again did it create new class for me absolutely no now, that is something which is interesting see i just changed the sequence it created new class for me i did not change the sequence rather i only initialized a different value did it generate a new class for me yes point to note again it did generate the classes and if you notice this, this is all using generics if you see. So number name and address, though these are R names, but actually number name and address stand more like a type T in case of .NET. And that's what is more important here. That is here, these are this, this actually goes for creating a class which is more like a generic class. And that's the reason you pass on anything out here. ABC or 100, it doesn't matter. It's going to just consider that as just a class object or values for a class mm -hmm. object. So, points to note here. This class is defined by compiler. We did not define this class. What we can do is at the max, we can just initialize the values or properties the way we want it. Will we get intelligence while we define number name and address in the curly brackets? Absolutely no. It is all up to you. How does it get the type then? You have to initialize these values to something. Can I change the values? Absolutely no, because only gated properties exist. How do I hold the class object? Since you don't know what's on the right hand side of equal to, then you use var type all the time. Can I pass on this object back to some function or so? Absolutely no, because remember var cannot be passed as a parameter. Can I define this globally? 
No. Remember, it's a bare parameter. It cannot be defined at a global level or so. Then, can I create a collection of this kind? You can. And that is what is a surprise. How do you create a collection of the type that you did not define? Here comes one more way. Same object initializer. If I define collection is equal to and if I define new type of collection and I don't know what collection is this. So type I don't know. And then you go and initialize multiple number of values in same manner. So you may define now first value, then second, then third, then fourth. Define anything that you want one after another. Can I actually iterate through this collection? Why not? Use for each loop where item inside collection. And then you can print on the console item dot name then. If you run the code, you'll find out values will be printed on the console as it is. Is it not simple guys? So as long as it when it comes to ORM also, one can very well create such kind of a read-only class object collection. And then such read-only class object collection is what we can very well use for reporting purpose. But barring that, you don't see any kind of usage of anonymous type in case of .NET. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to switch back to link you and we'll be discussing about how in link you this thing can help us. And before we proceed, one last part we'll be discussing that is called as Lambda expression and delegates. So finally, I'll surround this with a region and let me name this as anonymous type in case of .NET. Thank you.